Hello and welcome to Section 7 of Mastering TypeScript. The previous section was on language features for code improvement. This section is on advanced ES6 and ES7 features. This section is going to look at some very new and experimental features currently available in TypeScript. First we'll look at what generators are and how they improve the performance and efficiency of our application. Then we'll look at writing asynchronous code with async and await. In that video, we'll also look at ES6 promises. After that, we'll have two videos on using decorators in our application. Now we move on to the first video of this section, and it's an introduction to generators. We'll talk about what generators are and how the code execution path works when using them. A new feature coming to JavaScript with ES6 is the ability to create generators. Generators are a powerful way to define a function that returns a generator object, and then by using this generator object, we can iterate through its values on demand. Take note though that generators in JavaScript are very similar to what's done in languages like C-sharp, Python, and Ruby with the yield statement. If you're already familiar with that concept in those languages, then that knowledge will be easily transferable here. Here's an example of a generator. To help show how the code executes, I've added console.log statements showing the execution path from 1 to 7. So what's happening here? Well, this getNames function immediately returns a generator object. This happens because we've defined this function as a generator function using the syntax function star. The return generator object is stored on this name generator variable, and the execution continues down until we call the next method on our generator object. Once we do that, the code jumps into the generator function and starts executing. Execution will continue until we hit a yield statement or exit the function. In this case, it hits the yield statement on the second line for the string John. When that happens, the execution exits our generator function and continues executing back at where it was by returning an object from the next function. The yielded value, in this case the string John, can be found on the value property of the object returned by next. So this line will display 3 and then the name John. After this, execution will continue on, but then again, here on this line, execution will jump back into our generator function because we have called the next method on our generator. The execution then re-enters where it last left off and continues down until it hits the next yield statement or the end of the function. In this case, it hits this yield statement for the string Stephanie. Then we exit the generator function again and the string Stephanie is yielded in the value property of the return object of the next method. Execution continues down, and we once again hit a next method. However, in this case it's a little different. A value is being passed in here, and so when execution re-enters our generator function, the value passed into the next method will be assigned to the variable on the left side of the expression, if one exists. In this case, my value will now hold 964. This is a useful technique for if we ever need to change the internal state of a generator. So now execution continues until we hit a yield statement or the end of the function. At this point, we've hit the end of the function, and so it exits and no value is yielded. It then continues execution where it last left off, and the value property here would be undefined. Note that there is a second property on the object that's a boolean value called done. As you can probably guess, this boolean value indicates if the generator is done. In this case it contains true, since the execution exited the generator instead of yielding a value, but it would have been false in the past two statements. When we run this code, we now see our expected output, where the execution goes from 1 to 7, and John is logged first, Stephanie, our passed in value, and finally this done value is true, because it's done. 
The example we have just looked at isn't very typical though. Usually we would have an indefinite amount of values yielded from a generator, and so instead of manually calling next and checking the done property for when it's done, we could use a for of loop. A for of loop works well with generators, or any iterator. It will keep calling next on the generator and provide us with the value property in this variable until the done property is true. In this case, it would iterate all the values from 0 to 1000. To sum up and add to what we've been saying here, generators enable us to easily get an item on demand. And because of that, they don't require us to wait until all the items have been generated before using one item. They also allow us to have infinite sequences. And finally, the last point I'm going to make here is that because they give us one item at a time, that helps to reduce memory usage in our application. We're going to go over this point more in detail in the next video. In this video, we have gone over what generators are and how their code execution path works. In the next video, we're going to learn how we can easily improve performance and efficiency in the applications we write by using generators.